Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're taking a look at the best camping and survival knives that you can get for less than $50. And whether you're a car camper or an ultralight hiker, a hunter or an emergency preparedness junkie, there's something for all of you under this price limit. Let's check them out. So as I alluded to in the intro to this video, there's a lot of different ways you can go when you're selecting your knife for your outdoors scenario. And that's really what we're talking about here is when you're going to spend time in the outdoors, what are you going to have on your side? The first thing you really need to answer is, are you going to go with a fixed blade or a folding knife or a multi-tool? Definitely advantages to each one of those different genres. Multi-tool, of course, you can get a lot of functionality in a small space. Folding knife, it's very compact. Multi-tool is as well for that matter. With a fixed blade, you can get some more size and get bigger knives. You can get more strength, generally speaking. So which one's right for you? Hopefully I'll show you some options here that are gonna help you uh, kind of hone in on what's gonna work and what's right for you. Starting off, we're gonna look at multi-tools under that $50 mark. And when you're dealing with that price range, you really ought to just say which Swiss Army knife is gonna be the best one. And I've got two choices right here. The first is the Huntsman model. And I think this really is, under that $50 mark, the most well-rounded Swiss Army knife, has the most well-rounded set of tools for the outdoor user. Price on this particular version with the translucent sapphire blue handles is about 45 bucks. And while you know the classic red Swiss Army knife is more iconic, blue actually has its advantages when you're dealing with going into the outdoors, since it actually is one of the least commonly occurring colors out there in the wild. So in addition to stuff like orange, don't overlook a blue handled knife as something that might be easy to locate if you set it down. This knife has some pretty solid kind of Swiss Army knife standard features. You've got your cap lifter and your bottle opener with screwdriver tips built into those. You've got the toothpick and tweezers. Tweezers, of course, real good for splinters or ticks in the wild. You've also got your pair of scissors. You've got an excellent little wood saw, pretty much the best when in terms of these small pocket multi-tool saws out there. Definitely a must have for your outdoors multi-tool. And then as far as blades, you've got two. You've got a larger main blade and a smaller blade, which is gonna be great for like whittling by the campfire or other small precision cuts that you might not want to use the larger blade for. On the back, you've got an awl, great for uh, drilling or leatherworking projects. You've got a small parcel hook and you have the corkscrew, which for a long time, I kind of laughed at the idea of a corkscrew on so many Swiss Army knives out there because how many people are honestly using their Swiss Army knife to open wine? You might be one of those people, nothing wrong with that whatsoever, but there's actually a lot of utility in this, this particular implement beyond just popping a cork. One, you can use that tip right there to help untie stubborn knots, especially paracord to get cinched down really hard. I love using that for that purpose. And also, you've essentially got space inside that corkscrew where you can store stuff. A lot of people have been doing that over the years, and even Victorinox has gotten into the game. You know, they've seen that out there and come out with this, the Fire Ant set. Now what you get with this is three different fire strikers. You can throw sparks off of a sharp crisp edge, such as the back of the saw on this model, and six pieces of tinder. And you can put a piece of that tinder and that fire rod in the corkscrew at the same time. So you've always got it with you as long as you have that knife with you, which is pretty cool. Another option to check out would be the Farmer. It's about 46 bucks for this particular model. And what you give up in kind of variety of tools, you don't have as many here, you give that up in exchange for more durability. A couple ways. You've got, for one, a single blade, but it is thicker, a little more strength there, and the handles here, rather than being a plastic material, are an aluminum material. These are the Alox handle scales. A little bit sturdier, a little bit less to go wrong, quite frankly. Now you won't get the toothpick and tweezers with this particular type of handle, but that's okay. The other tools you get, you get the reamer there. You don't have the, uh, the eye through it like the other awl we just looked at, but this is great also for drilling and punching holes. Great little scraper too for your, uh, your fire steels if you need that. 
you've got your bottle opener and your can opener and you have their excellent saw as well. And like I mentioned, the spine of these can be crisp enough to strike your fire steel. Just hold your tinder down with that, pull the rod back and you're good to go. So either of those Swiss Army knives is going to make a really good option. But I also think beyond just kind of a standalone choice, either one of them is also going to make a great complement to a larger knife, whether it's a folder or a fixed blade. And we're going to start with folders and we're going to start with two exclusive knives for us here that come from the minds of some of the most famous fixed blade survival makers on the market today. And the first is this particular knife right here, the Becker BK40 made by K-Bar. The standard version of this knife comes in at 45 bucks. This knife center exclusive with a D2 blade comes in at just 50 bucks. So you get a really nice bump up in edge retention. Now, if you're unfamiliar with D2, in this price range, it's really hard to beat the edge retention you can get out of a D2 steel knife these days. And you've got a nice broad bellied clip point blade made out of this stuff right here. Whether you're using it for hunting, carving, or just general woods loafing, as Ethan likes to call it, this is going to cover all your bases. Now, one of the things you typically give up when you move to a folder from a fixed blade is handle comfort. Very few folders out there are designed to be genuinely really comfortable to use as you use it over a prolonged period of time. This is one of those knives that really takes that into account. We have a contoured and comfortable handle really inspired by the full size Becker fixed blades or the, uh, the mid sizers, I should say, like the BK 16. You've got essentially the same shape here with no aggressive texturing. It's just the natural curves of the handle helps it lock into your hand and tr feel truly comfortable as you go to use it. Very nicely done. You've got a liner lock to secure the blade, one hand opening thanks to the thumb studs. Pretty decent action. One of the things I would recommend, which you're gonna see on all the folders I'll show you here, is go with something that has a pivot that uses a washer-based construction. Don't go with something that says ball bearing action or ceramic ball bearings or anything like that. When you're getting, getting out there and getting dirty, you're gonna appreciate the solid washer style of construction on knives like these. As far as carrying this knife, you do have that four position pocket clip right here. It's a nice subtle wire variety, looks good and makes it a really good candidate for using for any kind of tough work out there, not just when you head outdoors. The next you know, famous survival knife maker that we're gonna show a folder from is Randall's Adventure Training. They went on to form SE knives, but before that, their designs were licensed through Ontario, who still makes the Ontario Rat One folder. And you can't talk about a budget outdoors survival list without talking about the Rat One. They are phenomenal, proven designs at this point. And this particular exclusive version right here takes the bones of that and really gets it as close as it's ever been to the fixed blades in terms of its styling out there. The least expensive knives in this series start at about 32 bucks and you've got synthetic nylon handles and an Aus 8 stainless steel blade. This upgraded version right here comes pretty much near the top of the price range here at just $50 with that nice canvas micarta handle scales and D2 blade steel. On this particular one, we've got a black coating but satin finish is also available on this knife. Both of these two knives have blades just over three and a half inches, which is a good length for Versatility can handle big enough stuff without it being so large that it gets unwieldy at the small stuff. Slicing efficiency is going to be a little more easy on this Ontario than it is on the Becker. That blade is a little bit more of a brute, which can be a good thing too. Backing up to the handles, liner lock for security, four position pocket clip, simple uh, bent steel clip here. And the micarta is a really cool handle material to see on a knife like this. In addition to being a pretty comfortable feel in the hand, that material has great benefits when you head outdoors. If you're working hard, things are getting sweaty, or you're at all near water, when micarta gets wet, it actually tends to feel a little bit tackier, a little bit grippier. So you're enhancing your grip on the knife the harder you work it, which is pretty darn cool. So I would definitely argue that the Ontario Rat is a modern classic, but if you want to look just a little further back in terms of your classics, check out the Buck 110 LT. 
comes in at about 30 bucks. It's made in the USA and you've got the same shape as the classic buck knife. And if you're going out looking for a folding knife and you're really into the hunting aspect, especially this would be a good choice. Wouldn't be a bad choice if, uh, if you needed a lighter weight knife as well. We're about 2.1 ounces for a three and three quarter inch bladed folder. Your blade here is a 420 HC stainless steel. Buck is well renowned for getting outsized performance out of this steel. So it's very highly respected. You got a cool stone washed finish on this knife, which we haven't seen yet so far. I tend to really like this finish because as you use the knife, you're bound to scratch it up. And that's a good thing. Don't be afraid of those scratches, but they're going to blend in a little bit on this particular type of finish. So you don't have to worry about it kind of looking to be draggled too soon. Now, the nice thing over this LT version versus some of the other new slim versions of the 110 that are, that are available nowadays is you've got the full thickness handles of the original Buck 110 here, which means it's going to be comfortable when you kind of push it a little bit harder, whether you're doing some whittling by the fire or any other thing where you're really pushing through some stuff. Now you don't have a pocket clip on this knife, which some folks will kind of miss that in terms of pocket carry. But the advantage is you don't have a pocket clip to get in a way of your grip to interfere with things and create a hot spot. Some people find certain clips uncomfortable. All depends on your particular hand. To compensate for the lack of clip though, you do get for that $30 price included a nylon sheath with two directions of carry. You can carry it horizontal on your belt or vertical right away. Now the buck is certainly an icon and it's heavily influenced a lot of folders over the years. And we're going to come to cold steel next with uh, kind of a connection to this classic hunter. It's a lot of cold steels that really fit nicely in this list. The first one we'll look at is the double safe hunter. Clearly you can see the influence of that buck 110 on this cold steel price on the cold steel comes in about $34. You've got a three and a half inch blade, a little bit thicker than the buck 110 and you have a flat grind as opposed to the hollow grind. So some folks are definitely going to appreciate the little added stability that that provides on this particular knife. Steel is an HCR series stainless, pretty basic stuff, but very easy to maintain. It also uses a back lock mechanism, just like the buck 110 and for an added degree of safety, the double safe in the name, you've got an extra sliding safety switch. And that's going to work to prevent that back lock from possibly being disengaged. If you're gripping the knife really hard, not going to have to worry about that. It's also going to allow you to lock the knife closed too. the tip will come out a little bit, but it's not going to come flying open if you're storing this in a pack or a glove box or something else like that tackle box, anything where you might not have it in your pocket to begin with. But speaking of pocket, nice broad pocket clip, very sturdy right here, pull it out, slide the safety back, open the blade and you're ready to go. Next up is another knife. I think you can't not talk about when you're talking about the, this genre in this price range, and that's cold steels, thin wolf. One of the things or the stereotypical things you think about when you're heading outdoors that you'd be doing with your knife is wood carving, doing some whittling around the campfire. It's a great pastime and nothing cuts into wood quite like a Scandi grind, which is what you have here. It's essentially like a double planed chisel. If you're unfamiliar with it works so, so well on woods and the fin wolf is fantastic. It's got a very classic finish inspiration. They're uh, they're kind of Puko pattern. hence the fin wolf in the name three and a half inch blade again here. Great size OS eight stainless blade steel, which metallurgically is uh, very similar to that HCR of the previous knife we looked at. Pocket clip can work on the left or the right on this one. And you don't get a, uh, a double safety switch here, but you don't actually really need it because you've got the triad lock on this particular knife. If you're unfamiliar with that from the outside, it looks just like a back lock. I'm sure you'll agree. But underneath, They've re-engineered the way this lock bar interfaces with the tang of the blade. It's stronger, it's longer lasting, it's self adjusting over time. It's just about as strong as it gets when it comes to a folding knife lock and very little chance of squeezing it closed when you're really pushing through because they take a little bit more pressure typically than most lock backs that and they've just positioned this in just the right place where it's really nestled in your palm. You're not going to have to worry about it. 
Both of these cold steels have some good color options available. Of course, you got the bright orange on the double safe. You've got a red here. Blue is also available. And as I said, that's another great color choice. But like a lot of cold steels, this knife is a fantastic value. About 37 bucks for this. The double safe hunter we just looked at before, 34 bucks for that. You get so, so much high quality knife for your money right there. So when I talk about things like whittling around the campfire, that blade grind is going to come into play with any knife, but the handle is going to play a huge part in comfort over time as well. And the Finn Wolf's handle is pretty good, but it's still not gonna be as comfortable as some fixed blades out there. For another knife that kind of bridges the gap on the comfort side of things and is gonna make a great campfire whittling knife, in addition to other camp uses as well, is the Openel knife. Particularly the number eight is kind of the most popular size out there. Works great. Definitely not a, a hard use survival knife and I would never make claims that it was, but for ultralight hikers, or just general campers, it's a fantastic knife. The handles right there, made out of beech wood in this case, completely one piece, just a slot kind of cut out for the blade to sit in. Expertly contoured and perfectly smooth. Hot spots are very hard to come by when you're using this knife. Great, great whittling blade. Great slicing blade too. You can get it in a carbon or stainless steel and both of them are good options. Blade length itself is about three and a quarter. Very thin on the stock and ground very thin. The edges, super, super amazingly sharp on these guys. Now some of these smaller Openels don't have any sort of locking mechanism. The number eight and certain other patterns do. You can see you've got this locking ring. Very simple, kind of elegant in its simplicity that way. Keeps it from moving around. Easy to slide out of the way when you're done. Fold the knife closed and it'll even lock the blade in that closed position as well. Now, in addition to their handle comfort and their slicing capability and their lightweight, I mean, this knife is like 1.6 ounces. Their price is also fantastic. This one right here with the stainless blade, a Sandvik uh, 12C27, it's a Swedish stainless steel, 18 bucks. That's awesome. So if it does break, you're not too far out of pocket. And this is not the most robust knife out there. It's simple wood with a simple pinned construction right there. Certainly you can run into some things like warping from moisture over time, something to keep in mind. If that's a concern for you, check out an alternate version of the number eight. This is the number eight outdoor, a little more expensive. It's 40 bucks or 39, but you don't have to worry about the wood handle scales here. And you can get some bright color options too. Now, personally, I prefer a plain edge rather than the partial serrations here, but some folks are going to appreciate that, especially if you're cutting a lot of rope in your outdoor activity. Still, you've got that Sandvik Swedish stainless blade right here. You've got an opening hole on the blade, which makes it a little bit easier to open one-handed, but you can also use that when the lock is engaged, mind you, to operate shackles as well. You stick the piece in there and you can rot use the blade to rotate the shackle. Now you do give up a little bit in the, uh, the weight department with this version over the wood. Uh, we're at 3.2 ounces here but you do also have a whistle built into the back of this. So depending on if how much your whistle weighs that you might be taking with you, ultralight hikers especially, this might save you a little bit of weight or might even out or might be close enough that you're not so worried about it. Extra functionality, never a bad thing. All right, now we're gonna transition over to some fixed blades. I think we've got a good folder option here for just about everyone, but fixed blades are gonna offer something the folders can't. Generally speaking, more durability and easier maintenance. More durability because you can sometimes get thicker blades and you don't have any folding parts, no screws to walk out or pivots to break over time. Easier to maintain in that you gotta clean your knife sometime, especially if you're using it for food prep or hunting or anything like that. We, so we just talked about uh, ultralight uses with those open L's especially. The, uh, the Buck 110 LT would also be a great choice. When it comes to fixed blades, what a lot of, uh, of hikers will use if they're choosing a fixed blade would be a neck knife. And this right here, the QSP neck muck, is a great option for a sub $50 outdoor neck knife. Whether you're looking to save a little bit of weight, it's not ultralight, 3.8 ounces here. There are definitely lighter knives out there that have a little bit more size, but the compactness here is excellent and gonna be a good hunting choice as well with its kind of Nesmuk inspired blade shape. 
This knife comes in just under 40 bucks and your blade length just under three inches and a little bit thicker than some other knives out there. It's going to help with toughness on the steel so you can really push it hard and to mitigate the, uh, the thickness there, they gave it a full flat grind to keep it at least a little bit slicey. It's going to work pretty well, including at food prep too. The handle lets you angle that down. You can get on a cutting board. It's not going to replace a chef knife, but for some improvised, improvised stuff, it actually has some pretty good ergonomics for those tasks. Handles, we've got G10, green in this particular case, and it's not a, uh, an ergonomic hand filling grip. It's a grip that's all about retention. You've got three finger grooves and a broad hook at the back that your pinky is going to land on the other side of. So when you're pulling through a cut, a lot of retention right there. It's not really a stabby knife, but that's not really something you do much of in the, in the outdoors anyway. Just has a really nice compact feel overall. Now the sheath on these guys, made out of Kydex, so you've got nice positive retention, comes with a breakaway chain. You might want to replace that with paracord if you're, uh, if you're heading out. Maybe not, it's up to you. But the advantages of a neck knife is ease of access, quite honestly. You can conceal it, of course, very easily under a shirt, but if you're wearing a long winter coat or if you're wearing a, uh, a pack uh, with a wide hip belt, pockets or other belt sheaths can be a little hard to get to. So this hanging out right there in front of you can be very easy to access very quickly. Now, if you don't really buy into the neck knife concept, but you still like this particular knife design, You've got uh, holes here on the back, a large, or on the sheath, a large tech lock or something like Civivi's T-Clip gives you the ability to add a belt attachment hardware to this particular sheath and carry it upside down, side to side, whichever way you like. All right, so just like we can't talk about uh, this genre and this price range without talking about the Ontario Rat 1 for folders, when it comes to the fixed blades in this genre, we can't not talk about Mora's or Mora Kneef. And the one, if I had to boil it down to recommend, would be the Cansbowl. It's not the cheapest, not the least expensive Mora out there, but I think it's the most well-rounded Mora in the lineup, quite honestly. Comes in about 37 bucks for the least expensive version. Now, the reason I say this is kind of the most well-rounded Mora in the lineup is it blends the very neutral and very comfortable handle of the Garberg and the very similarly shaped Mora 2000 knives, meaning just about anyone can use it. Pairing that up with a compound ground blade profile that combines the wood cutting ability of the Scandi grind along with a scalloped front leading edge that thins out the steel to kind of mitigate some of the disadvantages of the Scandi grind, which are more fine slicing needs. Because of that, this is going to work really well at food prep stuff. It's going to be a great option for hunters out there especially considering the blade is not as thick as something like the Garberg, keeps the edge nice and thin. These things are fantastic. They cut great, slice well. You've got a crisp spine on this knife, so you can use it to strike a fire steel with that. Another popular thing, uh, another thing that helps you keep weight down by not carrying an additional piece with you. Speaking of weight, about 4.7 ounces on this guy. Not a featherweight, but not a lot either. As far as the sheath on this least expensive version, simple and classic. Hard plastic clicks in, you've got some drain holes at the bottom and a leather belt loop attached here near the top. This ring can slide down so you can reverse it. Just gonna work so, so elegantly for just about anyone. Now these knives have definitely shown to be very durable when actually getting put to use and put to use hard in the field. But one of the things you do give up that you get on something like that QSP right here is a full tang. You can see here the tang of that knife has the scales, handle scales bolted to each side of the knife, whereas the Cansbowl has what's called a stick tang, a partial stick tang. It doesn't run the full length of the knife and it's actually molded over with the handle. Good thing about that is a notable lack of any kind of hot spots or opportunities for a hot spot, but some folks are going to kind of appreciate the extra peace of mind that a stronger tang will give you. And there are options in the Mora range for that, but they go beyond the price range here. So as an alternative, we've got these guys right here, the Condor Pterosaur and the Bush Glider. Very similar in uh, kind of conception to some of the quote unquote full tang Moras out there. You can see here, we've got 
that tang of the knife sticking out the back side of the handle. So you can you really see the strength that this construction offers. It's not hidden underneath the handle and you get some extra utility out of that bit of exposed tang, both for scraping and for hammering tasks, or pounding tasks anyway. And then you still get the comfort of the full molded handle right there. Pretty nice compromise and the prices on these guys, like 45, 46 bucks too. Now, rather than offering a hybrid blade shape like the Cansbull does, they went more specialized, give you two distinct options. The Pterosaur, you've got that bushcraft blade shape with the Scandi grind. Works great for honestly more than just bushcraft, but it's kind of a classic -y, classic bushcraft profile. Whereas the bush, bush glider, a little bit more hunting specific or food prep general purpose specific rather than the, uh, the specialized Scandi grind because you've got a full flat on this guy possibly a better option for your hunters out there as well, since you've got less resistance behind the edge. 1095 carbon steel on both of these guys though, good amount of toughness in that steel, which is definitely appreciated on something you're gonna use hard, crisp spine on this pterosaur too, so you can do your fire steel striking. Sheaths on these knives, actually I just pulled the, the bush glider sheath because that's the orange one, but it doesn't matter, they're all compatible anyway. Highly visible if you go with the orange versions of any of these knives. Similar hard plastic drain holes at the bottom. Nice thing about these two that I didn't mention before, they don't take up a lot of room width wise on your belt. So it's very easy to incorporate into your carry. All right, next up we get into the more stereotypical quote unquote survival knives out there. And the first one I'll show you is not just one of my favorite budget survival knives. It's one of my favorite fixed blades in this price range period. No matter what you're trying to do, the Cold Steel SRKC is probably going to be able to handle it for you. 44 bucks for this guy. SRK, the survival rescue knife, or some people call it the search and rescue knife C for compact. It's a little bit smaller than the full sized SRK. And I like the blade a little bit better. We're five inches long. You've got an SK five carbon steel with a coating to help keep rust at bay a little bit slightly thinner than the original SRK. We're about an eighth of an inch thick and you've got a flat grind here. Offers a little more stability than the hollow grind of the original. It's the right size and the right shape whether you need a survival knife, an outdoor general purpose knife, a hunting knife, a small tactical knife. This really does do it all. The handles are rubberized over mold. You've got a lot of texture right there. If you're doing long you know, wood carving sessions, it might get a little bit hot underneath your hands, but you certainly have a lot of traction. Certainly a lot of traction when things get wet too. Nice finger guard protection. Not a protruding tang at the back, but you do have a thick, long stick tang on this particular knife. Very, very durable blade. The sheath is also excellent for the money, absolutely. It's Securex, which it's not Kydex, but it will click in very similar. And for extra peace of mind, you have got that loop there at the top to keep things in place. If it does come out, adjustable belt strap on the back. And because of the orientation of the holes and slots on the side, if you wanted to add something aftermarket like a tech lock or a T-clip, you're gonna be able to do that as well. All right, last but not least on the fixed blade side, I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the folders when I was talking about Becker Knife and Tool and the Ontario Rat series and the SE fixed blades, they're kind of what a lot of people think of when they think of a hard use outdoor survival blade, but they are more expensive. To get a, something along those same lines under 50 bucks, we're gonna look to Schrade with a model like their SCHF 52, it comes in $42. Now it's definitely not going to equal the fit and finish or the quality of those higher priced knives, it also has a hollow grind versus their more robust grinds on those knives. And while a hollow grind is not what I typically look for on a big, heavy, choppier knife, I can't deny that there is a ton of documented usage out there of these knives performing under extreme tough scenarios. So it's out there and we gotta show it to you for sure. 42 bucks, you get a seven inch blade of 1095 carbon steel a smooth powder coating to keep rust away without resorting to a like pebbly thick traction coating going on, which some brands do. Gonna be really nice to kind of keep your slicing efficiency going. Full tang blade here, you can see it there. 
protruding at the back. So you've got that striking spot. Rubber handles on these guys that are bolted on. So you get the shock absorption from that if you're using this to hit a little hard with. And of course, the wet weather grip as well. The handle on this knife allows you to choke back a little bit too to take advantage of the length you've got here to get a little more length on the chopping. But to balance things out when you go to do the small stuff, you've got a full size finger choil here or at least a full size, we'll call it a finger groove in the ricasso of the knife here because we don't actually intersect the sharpened edge, which is a good safety measure. So you can balance the knife out, get up there and do your more detailed cuts. Now, when I say this knife is a bargain, that actually extends to the sheath as well. Or should I say what comes in the sheath? Nothing wrong with the sheath just by itself. It's nylon, it's simple, it's rugged and durable. You've got a retention loop, but the front strap reveals some bonuses, including a fire steel with a striker and a diamond sharpening stone. Kind of trying to be a one-stop shop for a survival knife survival kit. All right, that's all I've got to show you today. And hopefully, no matter what your, uh, your outdoor recreation flavor of choice is, hopefully I help you find something here that's going to work for you. Let me know what your personal choices are out there, whether under this $50 budget or sky's the limit. Love to hear from you guys in the comments. In order to get your hands on any of these guys we talked about today, we'll have links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're gonna put your money down on one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.